Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our interview with Brett Hawkins. Brett is the co-founder and CEO at WideNet, WideFi, excuse me, which is developing a safer net a product uh, cyber, uh, at cyber safety and internal internet control app. And it ha currently has about 11,000 users in over 43 countries. And Cypher, SaferNet is an enhanced VPN that provides internet monitoring and controls protection across personal and business devices. So, Brett, thank you for coming to our interview today. Of course, it's great to join you on this, and I surely appreciate the invite. Thank you, absolutely. So, I believe that uh, with your background uh, and uh, we, I, we will have a thoughtful conversation about what's going on in a cybersecurity world and uh, how uh, SaferNet adds uh, value to the market. Brett, can you tell us a short story about your career path and what led, led you to start your company? Well, that's a, uh, uh, I like how you said short story because it's been a uh, quite a journey through, the, I've, I've gone through multiple different businesses. I'm kind of an entrepreneur at heart. I love, love small business, grow, growing small businesses. Um, we, uh, my wife is actually running a couple of uh, uh, pretty decent uh, event venues doing weddings. And we kind of oversee that for about 300 weddings a year. And, and uh, so we, we just live in a life of entrepreneur in my family. But uh, I started out in the investment world. I had an investment company for quite a few years, um, branched out into a medical wellness company, an oxygen delivery company, uh, spent several years building an LED light manufacturing company out of Hong Kong. And, uh, um, I, and, and I kind of got out of all of that, liquidated everything and, and was going into the consulting world, uh, really enjoyed that. Uh, ran into this uh, young entrepreneur uh, named Patrick. He, uh, he was working on a cybersecurity solution and I was looking at it, uh, gave him some suggestions and he did something really interesting is he did everything I, I suggested. I, normally in consulting, that doesn't happen. But uh, uh, it took uh, about two years and he ended up asking me if I'd come in and, and uh, take on the CEO role. Um, the, the market had changed a little bit. We were looking at making some changes. So we actually just changed up the entire model and went to, we were, we were working with, with trying to, to uh, um, enhance routers and actually reprogram some routers. And we switched it up to create um, clients to go on devices or, or apps to go on devices and, uh, and work on our cybersecurity from that level. And so it's really grown from there. It's really exciting. And, and that's, that's kind of the, the path of the process. I've been, I've been at SaferNet or, or WideFi is the, the founding company, but I've been at SaferNet uh, for uh, just under six years now. So it's been a, it's been a fun journey. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, go to the wider uh, concept of, cy of cybersecurity. Can you tell us uh, how most companies and individuals end up uh, getting hacked uh, during their lifetime and how to uh, avoid this from happening? <laughs> that's, that's a great question. <laughs> so many people uh, are, are doing things that are, they're just unaware of. Um, you know, you get an email from your your electric company and you and they're they're telling you your default and and you're thinking oh I'm not at default and you click on mm -hmm. it to see what's going on or or as a matter of fact just a couple of days ago I got an email from my cell phone company and and you know, I looked up at the URL and just laughed so I mean <laughs> if you're if you're aware of what to look for you can catch it and and actually we've got a little video a couple of video presentations on our on our um uh, safer net business site that people can uh, send out to their employees to train you how to not make those kind of errors. But there's, you know, a lot of times you'll you'll go to a wrong website or you're completely innocent and you trip up on something that doesn't quite make sense, but you're curious. So you step forward trying to find out what what the problem is. And just that form of stepping forward can cause you a lot of problems if you don't have the right security set in be behind you. So, um, but usually it's just an innocent little slip up. Um, I, you know, you've heard the stories about finding a, 
a uh, a little a little plug in on, on on laying on the floor and you want to see what's on it and you plug it into your computer and all of a sudden you you put a virus on your on your uh, uh, on your server and you're in a whole lot of trouble but there's so many different tricks that that um, hackers will use and you cannot keep up with them all because they come up with brand new ones all the time the the goal is is to do your best to keeping up with them but then on the backside, making sure that you've got proper protocols set for your for your small business to make sure that it doesn't destroy you in the process. Mm -hmm. So I I remember I myself um, I've got uh, recently some suspicious calls from uh, first of my uh, landline uh, phone, some uh, robotic call uh, from like Microsoft blah blah blah. Then I I uh, disconnected then to my uh, a mobile phone and the mobile phone also robotic call that uh, I've been in in a kind of a um, legal process with somebody and there was some uh, <laughs> telephone number. I called That's this right. number. There was some uh, another guy, he told, he was a little bit crazy why I called him. <laughs> so I think they <laughs> kind of set up a uh, very, very, very uh, sophisticated uh, a trap for me, but uh, I don't know why. Why it should be like this? I don't know. So no. uh, yeah. <laughs> so no, no. Uh, well, because I think I'm uh, also because I'm doing business and online. Probably my uh, footsteps are quite uh, a lot of footsteps uh, <laughs> digital, as you say. So. So yeah. how can we minimize our digital footprint uh, in our this world? Do you have some <laughs> tips uh, for, for our members or uh, listeners? Yeah, there, there are multiple things. Um, you know, educating yourself is, is the foremost. I mean, just being aware of what, what the present cybersecurity risks are. Um, I personally believe that there's not a soul should ever go on the internet for any reason without a VPN. I, I, I just personally believe that. I've, I've been that way for quite a while. I had a security guy in my investment company that just would chew me out if I, if I didn't turn on my company VPN before accessing my server from my house. And now VPNs have been so, so far advanced that it's just not one VPN or this encrypted tunnel between one location of the internet that to another location but now those VPNs can go anywhere. They, you, you can take that with you anywhere. But in, in our particular case, in, in SaferNet, what we've done is we've combined uh, uh, VPN technology and, and pretty high grade 256-bit encrypted VPN technology with virus protection. So we run virus protection within that VPN tunnel. So we're scrubbing so that if somebody accidentally gets to a bad, bad uh, website, that that uh, virus protection is scrubbing any viruses within that VPN, so that that when you when the traffic gets back to your device, the the virus is already gone. It's already destroyed. We have stopped the virus from actually reaching your your device, uh, so you don't have to deal with quarantine your viruses and that kind of stuff. So really, we're combining that VPN technology with virus protection, and then the the interesting thing is is that that with a small business, you want to have some kind of knowledge about what it is that's happening with your employees and, and what's happening with your cybersecurity. And, and, and so we've got a reporting, you know, most uh, larger businesses have the ability of filtering out portions of the internet or filtering out uh, websites or apps or whatever the case is. So we've combined the virus protection, the VPN technology, and the reporting mechanisms all within one app to make it very simple for the small businessman to be able to go in there and, and look like a hero taking care of most all of the cybersecurity issues that his company might have and simplifying it down into one app to, to be managed uh, really uh, from, from a novice. So it's, it's kind of exciting what some of these technology uh, guys have been able to develop for us. Mm -hmm. And what about uh, platforms such as Facebook, Google, or other big data companies? Because they seem to have uh, all data about us, and uh, sometimes this uh, bunch of data tend to leak to other parties. So what is your opinion on this? 
You know what, I, I personally think that um, privacy is one of the most important things that we're losing every single uh, day we step out there in, into the world. And so um, what, one of the things that I love about what our product does is this thing called, um, uh, well, what we do is, is we report all of the traffic that we're stopping on the outside. Uh, so we call it entourage because as you as you go to a particular location, if you go through Google, there's there's an enormous amount of, of uh, businesses and companies that jump on behind and just gather as much information as they can, as well as Google. That's why we call it entourage. If somebody comes up with a better name, I'd love to hear it. We've explored all kinds of stuff. But um, so in our dashboard, somebody can take a look at all the different places that is trying to get to you and that we're stopping. And a lot of times you'll see Facebook or you see Dropbox or you see these different locations that you might normally want to have contacting you. Because in, for example, in Dropbox, that's a company that you can store files in or, you know, there's all kinds of those kind of companies out there. But um, sometimes Dropbox will reach into your computer and, and you want them to. Other times they'll reach into your computer because they're gathering your information and you don't want them to. And with, with our technology, we, can, we know what it is that they should be doing when they're in your computer and we allow that. But if they're reaching in just to gather information, um, if they're reaching in with a different leading question or a leading solution, we block them. And so uh, it actually does a pretty good job of speeding up your internet connection because we're eliminating so many other things, reaching in and gathering or using your CPO to gather your own information. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So what are the best practices for small businesses to implement uh, uh, the solutions uh, and uh, prevent, prevent failure from your experience? Uh, because I used to uh, have for a few, <laughs> uh, this uh, VPN solution for a few months. Uh, I used to some, uh, I don't remember which one, but it was kind of uh, very annoying because uh, it prevented me to do some, uh, some, some kind of usual stuff that I used to do. So I, <laughs> I removed it. I don't know. Maybe it's now it's better, better time to do this uh, because I, I think that I, I, I really need it. I see this and uh, other guys that uh, kind of follow me on telephone on the internet. So, but on the other hand, uh, I'm afraid that this solution uh, kind of VPN will also prevent me to, from doing some stuff. Is there some kind of silver lining between this? Yeah, that's such a good question. And that's very true. Uh, I know that those the, that VPNs can be a little bit annoying because you're wanting to just have this protection in the background but you don't want to be interrupted in the things you have to do. Um, and 100% truthful, we're going to interrupt you sometimes. But if you try, for example, my bank changed its security protocol just recently, and I tried to reach my bank and it stopped me. It said, we're blocking you from the bank because there's, there's an issue. Well, I had to take that URL, go to my dashboard, drop it into the allowed category, and now I don't have a problem again because it, it knows that this is something that I've approved and it's okay. Um, if we end up in a place where, you know, it's one time, you know that it's not a bad website, it, we might end up blocking it because it might be a brand new website because if we haven't had a chance to crawl it, to verify it, we'll block it. Um, you can hit pause protection for uh, 10 seconds, 15 seconds to allow you to get access to it, but you don't even have to remember to turn on your protection again or turn on that VPN again, because it will automatically turn back on as soon as that 10 or 15 seconds is over. You've accessed the website, you, you can do whatever you need to within the website, and now that VPN is restarted again, and you don't end up having to put it into the allowed category. So we've got a few ways of being able to manage it. But from my mind, uh, for some of the other businesses that I've owned in the past, one of the biggest security protocol issues that I've run into is that my employees don't like following all the protocols we lay out. And so as much automatic as we can set up, it makes it so much better for everything because 
these these uh, this VPN that we're we're basing that foundation on, it automatically turns on uh, every single time you turn on a device. So it's not like you have to go and remember to turn on your VPN as soon as you hit your coffee house or whatever you're going to. It's protected all the time. Mm. Oh, no. Brad, I would like to hear your personal opinion. What is a commonly held belief in the, or a biggest uh, misconception in your uh, field of cybersecurity that you strongly disagree with? <laughs> what, a, what a great question. Uh, that is a very good question. Um, you know, it, it's, there's, people say that the cybersecurity is a, a science to be able to really understand. It's really, in my opinion, it's an it's an art. It it is one of those things that that there is no surefire guaranteed way to be a hundred percent safe online. You, you just can't do it. And uh, I know that that uh, IT professionals say, well, if you just do this and this, you won't have any problem. Well, I don't believe that's ever true because these these cyber these these hackers they're coming up with new ways of breaking into things all the time. And so the only way to be safe forever all the time is just never use the internet. Well, in my mind, the internet is the greatest tool in the world. It's, it has completely revolutionized everything we've ever done. And without using that, you're stuck in an, in an age old way of handling things. So in my mind, the best way to be able to handle it is to stay on top of the new security protocols. And so I know it's cumbersome. I know it's a kind of a pain in the neck, but it's, I think it's critical um, to give up a little bit on the hassle side to make sure that you're safe on the security side. Mm -hmm. So there are, uh, I believe, uh, numerous uh, tools and services available today uh, to bring uh, cybersecurity in-house or outsourced, but and how can, uh, for example, CISOs in large organizations determine what capabilities should be in-house and what should be outsourced? Do we have an opinion on this? Yeah, um, truthfully, in my opinion, when you're a small business, uh, you're gonna have to outsource everything. Um, you, can't, you can't try to create your own so solutions as a small business. And that's really our target is to be able to, to what, what we've done is taken those tools from the large business side that they spend thousands and thousands of dollars on, hundreds of thousands of dollars on, and we've broken it down into what is the most needed for small business, put it into one app and make it very simple for somebody. Because if it's not simple, it's not gonna be used. So if, if you know a business owner can't figure out how to download an app, onto a, a computer, a server, a desktop, a phone, whatever it might be, um, then that person probably doesn't know how to use the internet anyway, so that'd be fine. But as simple as downloading an app, connecting it to the, to the, the cloud, and it's, it's, it's safe as long as they keep that connected, it's a simple approach to making sure that you can keep up with the security protocols that the large businesses are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if we take a, a life of a small business owner or maybe a risk manager in a middle-sized uh, organization, what they should start to prioritize right now uh, that they are not doing currently from your perspective, from your point of view? Yeah, and really, I think that they need to take uh, inventory of what devices they have connected to what, um, you know, that a lot of times you'll have a, a server in a, in, a, in a building behind a firewall and they don't think about the fact that their employees have their laptops and their cell phones that connect to the Wi-Fi that is also connected to that same server. So you think because you're behind a firewall, you're safe because that server is behind a firewall. But as soon as you take a, a laptop or a cell phone out and you connect to a public Wi-Fi and you come back in behind the firewall, any viruses that have been collected at that Starbucks or wherever you happen to work is now in your environment behind the firewall 
and the, you've got a Trojan or you've got all kinds of these security protocol breaches that you don't even know that are there because you're allowing people to connect to the, to the Wi-Fi behind there. So that's where we feel it is so important to make sure that all devices are connected to a VPN 24 seven, always on 24 seven VPN, because at that point, that same protection that you have behind, behind the firewall in your office is extended anywhere you go to any public Wi-Fi. You've got that same protection. You're not running the risk of, of um, opening yourself up to a virus or a tro Trojan or whatever it is that you might run into on a public Wi-Fi because it's protected. Then when they come back into the office, they maintain that level of safety so the entire environment stays safe. That's it's one of those things that most employers have no idea that they're taking on that level of risk. They just don't know it. Okay, yeah, it's an interesting point. Yeah, I, I just today was in a public uh, uh, public Wi-Fi at the airport, and uh, my <laughs> browser is crashed, and I have to do it again. So <laughs> I don't know what I picked up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, next time I will use uh, your software. I have to do VPN. It was on my uh, kind of on my uh, um, list, but I never. Uh, took a moment, but now after this interview, I will have to, to, to try it. So, uh, Brett, I ask this question to all of my uh, guests. How we at Global Risk Community uh, can contribute to better understanding of this uh, complex world of risk to improve our services? From your point oh, that, that, that's a great question. I, I really think that the information has to get out to people that you cannot access Wi-Fi without having a VPN to keep yourself protected. Yeah, you just, you just can't do it in today's environment. It's, it's too dangerous. Um, you know, I, I, in any of my devices, I don't have any, uh, if, if, I, if I don't have a VPN connected to it, the only time I will turn it on is behind my firewall. I just won't do it because I wanna keep those devices um, clean. But as soon as I get a down, download or a VPN connected, I won't turn off that VPN if I'm not behind my firewall, because at that point, I know that I will get some kind of a virus. Now, what most people don't realize is that 96% of all viruses you don't even know about. 90%, I'm sorry, 96% of all hacks you don't know about. You get hacked, people gather information, you're not aware of it at all. They might take your credit card information, they might take you know, all kinds of stuff that you don't know about until three to six months down the road, and then you start running into some bigger problems. So it's not just that virus that causes your device to not work. It's that hack that comes and takes your information, and they they sell it in uh, various different ways, usually on the dark web, and, and it takes a while for it to get out and start hurting you. And that's where I think it's so important to maintain this level of safety of being always connected to some kind of a VPN to make sure that you're working. Our VPN, I actually think is much better because it's on 24 seven all, all the time, but we're also scrubbing for viruses, which as far as I know, and I don't know them all, but as far as I know, we're the only one that does virus and VPN together in one device, including our, our 200 internet controls as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think I uh, asked all my questions. Uh, uh, if there is something else that uh, I forgot to ask and you would like to add uh, that will benefit our audience? Yeah, I would just uh, like to mention if, if somebody would like to give us a try, we've got a 14-day free trial for, for anybody that they can give it a try. Um, the uh, uh, safernet.com, S-A-F-E-R-N-E-T.com, and to uh, go in there and and download the app and give it a try and see what they think about having having the confidence that they've got 24/7 uh, always protected from uh, from the internet. So I would love to see what the, what we could do to be able to help people. All right, thank you very much. It was a great interview and I hope uh, our members uh, will uh, learn something more interesting <laughs> about cybersecurity. Great, Boris. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I really appreciate it.
Absolutely.